Rebuilding a Stuart Models Twin Launch Model Steam Engine Part 5, Resizing the Cylinder Bores and Fitting the Pistons. This is the main cylinder block, obviously from the last episode, because I haven't done anything at it. When I tried to fit the piston rings in the last episode, I failed miserably because one of the cylinders is bigger than the other, and I just got nowhere. I didn't show it all in the video, it just drove me nuts. So anyway, I'm back from the asylum now and I can continue. And this, by the way, is a very short episode, and I do apologise for that. And the main part of the video, resizing the bores, I didn't show on video anyway, because I really couldn't do that. It was a hand, I'd nearly said a hand job, but it was a hand-operated job, with the reamer held in the main lathe chuck. I used a one-inch reamer, which is about the one in the middle of the picture here, and I know that it's set to one inch because I used it recently on a Stuart Models Victoria steam engine. The bore was very scored, and this one inch adjustable reamer cleaned up the bore and I got a finish like glass, so I'm going to repeat the process with this cylinder. Of course there are two here, and this will also make them both the same size. The first thing to do is to try a dummy run on the bench. This is a field job, I'm not using any measuring equipment other than my sort of aptitude for feeling things, and by that I mean mechanical things, and music as well of course. At the moment I'm not trying to ream the cylinder, I'm just finding out how the reamer fits in the cylinders, and in this one it nearly goes all the way through. It gets a little bit tight at the top, which means that the cylinder is bell-mouthed, and this is caused by the machining operation. Possibly the lathe is out of adjustment, or the boring tool was moved during the cutting operation. When I put the reamer into the other cylinder, it's a different story. This one is tight, it hardly goes in at all, and it is tightening up again towards the top of the cylinder, so we have a situation whereby the cylinders are both bell-mouthed and one is smaller than the other. Great. So with the one-inch adjustable reamer firmly in the lathe chuck, I rotated the chuck towards me and rotated the cylinder block away from me, and after about an hour, suddenly both of these cylinders were the same size. I say suddenly, but really I mean eventually both of the cylinders were the same size, and I couldn't really video it, it was too difficult to get the camera in, and I really had to concentrate on what I was doing, because it would have been very easy to make a mess of this. And now, as can be seen in this clip, both of the pistons, complete with the rings, fit into the bore much better than they did yesterday when I tried it. I know I should be using a piston ring compressor, but I don't have one, so I just use a small screwdriver. And both of the pistons now go into the cylinder, and they feel really good, with absolutely no tight spots anywhere in the travel of the piston. The actual pistons are fractionally smaller than the cylinder, and they were to start with, so that's a good thing. I'm just going to flood the cylinder with oil to see whether any oil comes out of the other end, and the good news is it doesn't. To stop side play on the piston rods, I'm going to temporarily put the lower cylinder covers in place and the cylinder covers will act as a guide for the piston rod to keep everything straight. Before I put these cylinder covers in place, albeit temporarily, I'm just going to put some oil in the middle part. As you can see from this clip, the hole in the cylinder cover is a little bit on the large side, but once the engine's all back together and the glands are in place, everything will be fine. All I'm going to do for now, after I've put the cylinder covers in place, is just move the piston rods up and down, and see if I can detect anything wrong with the actual piston. I really don't think so, I think everything's going to be okay. Even though on the surface this engine looks very well machined, and indeed some of the parts are very well made, others are a little bit so-so. Mm, but never mind, it's going to be okay by the time it's all back together. Yes, and the good news is, the piston feels great in the cylinder. Well, this one does. This is the left-hand one. It always surprises me how accurate the human sense of touch and feel can be. Now I just need to see whether the right hand cylinder feels the same as the left. And indeed it does. Yeah, it's good. No tight spots. Very, very smooth. There is some resistance because these cast iron piston rings are pressing against the wall of the cylinder. And the enlarged hole in the gland area is also allowing the piston rod to move from side to side. But all in all, this feels okay. From my experience, I don't think I'm going to have a problem with this. The previous builder must have had a problem though, and that's probably why the lug's broken, maybe he threw the part across the room in disgust. Anyway, I'm not going to be doing that, so that's okay. When I press the pistons from the other end using my finger in the bore, 
They're also very, very smooth, so this is definitely successful. There's a lot to be said for having a set of expanding reamers in the workshop. Just to be able to make that very, very slight adjustment is really useful. I bought the whole set quite a few years ago via eBay, and I remember it well, they cost me £80, and that is a very low price in my opinion for such quality items. Very old, very good, very well made. So I'm pleased that this job's out of the way because it could have gone spectacularly wrong, but it didn't, and that's good. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.